Hey y'all, welcome back. I am excited as heck to do this video because it is new palette day. I got a couple of new palettes in the mail today that I ordered on Ulta's most recent sale. I'm gonna do a look with one of them and I'm gonna show you both of them just because I can and it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. <clears throat> so the first palette I'm gonna show you is this LA Girl Main Stage Desert to Dream palette. I've never tried one of their big format palettes like this, but this one, the color story definitely speaks to me. It's very beautiful. I haven't even taken the uh, little film off of it yet that's on there, but I really like this color story, so I will probably do a video with this pretty soon, um, maybe after the one I'm doing today. Funny story, this came in the mail and three of the shadows were completely shattered in it, so I actually had to go to Ulta today and take it back, and when I took it back, I bought it on sale, <clears throat> but it wasn't on sale in the store, and I don't understand why Ulta's online sales and their in-store sales don't like cross over. That makes zero sense to me, but whatever. I'm not Ulta's business manager person, so I thought I was going to have to pay a few dollars extra when I exchanged it, but I guess the authorization thing wasn't going through, so the manager ended up crediting my account for it as if I had bought the full price one and I was returning it at like the sale price, I guess. So I got credited like $2 whenever I returned it. So, hey, I guess that's sort of like their payment for making me drive all the way to turn it in and, you know, return it and everything. But the palette that I want to work with today is the Revlon and Wonder Woman 1984 palette. I love this, like, iridescent packaging on it. This palette is also bigger than I thought it was going to be, but I'm very excited about this. This is what the palette looks like. I've never used Revlon shadows before, but I'm a huge Wonder Woman fan. And because this coincided with the movie's release, we've got some of these like more 80s colors down here. Really excited about this turquoise color up here. I think I already know exactly what I'm gonna do with it. This look might end up being trash because I have no idea if these shadows are good quality. I haven't even swatched them yet, but I just wanna see what I can do. But I think I'm gonna work mainly with this purple, this turquoise, maybe the pink, and then I might do an inner corner with one of these. This is a face palette too, so I think these two big ones are supposed to be highlights. I'm not really a highlighter boy, so um, so I'm probably not going to use those. Also, I actually have foundation on for once in my life. I know who the fuck am I. Um, I'm wearing, in the spirit of doing this palette, because Gal Gadot, who plays Wonder Woman, is a brand ambassador for Revlon, so I'm actually wearing the Revlon Candid, like the blue light protection foundation in the little squeezy tube with the pump on the end. I literally never hear anybody talk about that foundation, but I think it looks great. It's just like a great kind of natural, like very light to medium coverage. I have two... Um, pretty light layers on today. I have a huge like acne scar right here So I wanted to get something on to cover that up. So I actually have foundation on today I use the elf poreless primer the one that's in the pink tube not the putty one I like the pink tube one because it's really silky on the skin. I have the Revlon candid foundation. I'm in the color cashew which I got on sale at Ulta for like three dollars God like a year and a half ago and I have a little bit of elf camo concealer and the color or hydrating camo concealer in the color light peach kind of on my acne marks down here a little on my nose and just a little bit on my cheeks i don't do under eye concealing as you if you couldn't tell i've got kind of dark circles under here i can't find a concealer that works well because i've got a lot of little crease lines under my eyes so i just usually don't even bother but i'm really pumped to work with this palette i hope it's good we're going to go on this journey together i'm going to throw on some eyeshadow primer i'm going to use the Milani eyeshadow primer just because it's the one I have and I will be right back to try this palette All right, so I'm ready to start working with this palette. I think I'm gonna take this purple I think I'm gonna do purple on the top lid teal or that's that's blue. That's not teal Teal on the lower lash line. I might blend out the purple with this matte pink But it will just kind of have to see what happens when we get there um, And I'm gonna go in with this elf eyeshadow C brush first to kind of pack that color on Ooh kicked my desk. I'm going to try to scoot up a little bit so maybe you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm just going to go right in with this purple. Hopefully it's good. We're going on this journey together, everybody. It looks like it's picking up well on the brush, so that's exciting. Tap a little bit off. Am I in frame? Yes. So I've had my eye on this palette for a long, long time because Revlon and, and uh, Gaga Dot are partnered together. So put out this palette before the movie came out as kind of like a um, like a I'm sure it was 
you know, some kind of marketing stunt. They put out this palette. They had, like, some lipsticks, some crayons, some, like, eye sticks. There was, like, a jelly glitter pot highlighter thing that I wasn't interested in. And, um... They actually have a little hand mirror that I, is really silly, but it's got like the Wonder Woman symbol on the back, and I kind of want that too. But I've had my eye on it for a long time, and I was always wondering what was going to happen with the palette, because it came out a long time before the movie, you know, to kind of build hype for the movie. And then because of COVID, the movie kept getting delayed. I'm talking about Wonder Woman 1984 here. So I just kind of kept waiting for it, you know, to go clearance, to go on sale, to go away, basically, and that I could try to pick it up on some kind of sale. The other weird thing is that this palette, this whole collection has like zero in-store presence. So there's like no, it's not in Target, it's not in Ulta, it's not in CVS, which I found really strange. Um, and I'm the kind of person where I like to buy stuff in person, so... You just can't frickin' find it anywhere, which is really annoying. Um, and I like to go in and look at things. So I was browsing Ulta's sale page the other day. This purple is frickin' amazing, by the way. Look at that. I'm really impressed so far. Um, I was looking at Ulta's sale page the other day for no reason. I was, you know, drinking wine on a weekend and, you know, maybe a little bit drunk. And what do I do whenever I get drunk? I don't send nudes or text my ex-boyfriends. I look at clearance makeup online. So I looked at this palette because it was on sale because it's normally like $15, which is not expensive at all, especially for kind of a full face palette. And I thought about just buying it full price a long time ago, but I decided I would have some self-control and I would wait. And finally, that wait paid off because it went on sale. I don't know if Ulta's discontinuing it. I can only imagine they are because like the movie has come and gone. It was on HBO Max. It was not good. It was not well received. I didn't really like it that much and I'm a huge fan of the first Wonder Woman film. So I can only imagine that they're kind of getting rid of the stuff right now but it was on clearance for like, or on sale I should say, for I don't think it was like $11. It wasn't that much off. It was like 4 or $5 off. Um, but that was enough to pull me in, considering I was already thinking about buying it full price, and I just wanted to see what this palette was made of, because it's a little bit neutral, but it's got a lot of bright colors in it, which is obviously really up my alley. So I just kind of wanted to see what this palette would do. And I mean, I've only used one color so far, but this purple is really impressing me. All right, I'm going to use this Glamour Dolls brush and just blend that edge, see how that blends. So I had to go to Ulta today to return my LA Girl palette, or exchange it, I mean, and thank goodness they had one there. And I was looking around at Ulta's stuff because they've been kind of resetting, and I came this close to buying that god-awful Black Widow and Marvel and Ulta eyeshadow palette. It is the most, like, boring palette on the planet but it was on sale for like five dollars and I came so close to buying it but I did not. I, I almost bought a Z palette as well but I did not. Had a little bit of self-control. But I have this thing about like female driven action movies. I don't know if it's because like I'm a gay man and that's just really appealing to me. I'm gonna dip into this pink a little bit and try to blend the edge with the pink. Um, I have this thing about female driven action movies where I really you know, you can give me the most generic action movie on the planet, but if it has a woman in the lead role, then I'm, like, all in, baby. And that's... I mean, that's not to say the first Wonder Woman is a bad movie, because I think the first Wonder Woman is my favorite superhero movie of all time. I love it. I cry, like, three times every single time I watch it. Like, the sequence, the No Man's Land sequences... Oh god, it's just breathtaking. I just want to cry thinking about it whenever she's trying to save all the people. And Steve Trevor's like, oh, there's no what we came here to do. Because he's like a dude and he's trying to order her around. And she's like, she like turns around and what does she do? She like, she's like, it's not what you came here to do, but it's what I'm going to do. And then she like puts on her headband and like takes her robe off and she's got like her cool armor on. Oh my god, every, every time I just sit there and like my lip is trembling and I'm just crying. It's so beautiful. I love that sequence. And not only is it like thematically amazing, it's also just shot so well. The color grading in that movie 
specifically too is just like out of this world like the London sequence everything is color graded very like blue green and it just looks stunning I love the way that movie looks and I'm like a big fan of like you know slow motion action in movies so when she's you know doing her thing in the no man's land sequence and she like has like her wrist guard and the bullet like ricochets off in slow motion oh my god I cannot, oh god, I love that movie so much. It's just so, it just makes you feel like hope for humanity, which makes me feel really happy. Like, yeah, the ending sequence is a little bit silly and overdone, a lot of CGI, but man, that No Man's Land sequence, the sequence where she like jumps up into that church window and she like slide kicks the dude and then the guy's like rifle like breaks on her waist, oh my god. Oh, fuck. I love that movie so much. And so that kind of brings me to talking about the Black Widow um, palette, because I almost bought that Black Widow palette today because it was so cheap, and I feel like there's just something inside of me where I have to, like, support, you know, these, like, female... Like, I know that Scarlett Johansson, or, you know, women in general, probably don't have much to do with it. It's literally just Marvel, which is owned by Disney, which is one of the biggest corporations on the planet, um, just making more money by partnering with Ulta, but still there was just something inside me where I was like, oh god, like I just want that palette, because there's a few good shades in it, there's like a deep gunmetal, there's a black, there's like a couple burgundies, and there's kind of like a look, like a grayish greenish duochrome looking shade, I haven't swatched them so I have no idea if they're actually good, but um, yeah, it just, I don't know, it was cheap and I was like, oh should I, should I buy it, should I not, and I did not, don't worry. But you can bet your ass I thought about it. I'm going to use a Real Techniques. Um, this is just like a shading brush. I'm going to go in with the turquoise on my bottom lash line. How are we feeling about this so far? How are we feeling? I might have gone a little heavy-handed with the pink on the rim, but it actually blended out pretty well. I'm surprised I didn't take it up through my brow. I could probably blend the pink up a little bit higher on this eye, actually. This is just under the brow. My brow, at least, because I have hooded eyes. I don't have a lot of lid real estate when my eyes are open. So I'm going to take this turquoise and just start running it along the lower lash line. But yeah, I'm a huge fan of female-driven action movies. One of my favorite movies is Atomic Blonde with Charlize Theron. She is so cool. I just love that movie. And there's a whole one-take fight sequence, or it's made to look like it's a one-take fight sequence in the middle of the movie. And it is breathtaking. And every time I watch it, I feel like I'm going to have about 12 aneurysms. And there's a lot of, like, bisexual lighting in that movie, which is, like, where you use, like, pink and blue or turquoise and purple, kind of like those tones that are representative of the bi pride flag. Um, there's a lot of bisexual lighting going on in that movie. I'm a huge fan of that. I just like, there's just something about watching a woman kick a bunch of dudes' asses that just gets me every time. And even if it's not a particularly great film, like, uh, like Peppermint was a movie that came out a couple years ago that was like kind of Jennifer Garner's like return to action. And she did that movie, and it was kind of bad, but I was still entertained. Speaking of Black Widow the and Scarlett Johansson, the live-action Ghost in the Shell, which is pretty terrible, I still like it. I've watched it, like, probably, like, 50 times. It's kind of inexplicable. There's just something about watching her crashing through a window in this, like, futuristic skin-tight suit, and she's, like, in stealth mode, and then she, like, runs on the wall, and she, like, shoots at the dudes and then like kicks the guy oh my god i can't it's so cool i like there's something about action movies with women that just really brings out my like inner 13 year 13 year old boy and i cannot explain it so i'm doing kind of an underwing here just kind of seeing how that goes i'm gonna grab this i used this brush earlier to blend out the top edge a little bit it doesn't have any product on it i'm just going to use that to kind of blend out this turquoise under the eye. I can't decide what I want to do on the inner corner. Thinking I could either pack that 
matte pink on or the blue like I kind of want to use that blue even though the blue seems very counterintuitive to put on my inner corner because it's like a really dark color but I kind of want to anyway because I don't like to play by the rules here oh I want to tell you guys about um, the lip collection video I recently recorded so I really liked doing that eyeshadow collection video even though it was kind of a task so I decided to do a lip collection video even though my lip, my lip collection is kind of small um, so I filmed that the other day and it was the first video that I had filmed in 4k because I've been filming all my other ones in 1080p because I know 4k is like it's kind of unnecessary like who's gonna watch my videos on a 4k TV like literally nobody but I wanted to you know kind of see what my camera was made of so I did it in 4k so YouTube for those of you that don't know this um, and I'm still figuring it out too I'm not some kind of expert here so YouTube, whenever you upload a video, if you upload it in HD or 4K, it will process every version first, and then it'll process like the 480p, like the lowest, like standard definition one first, and then it'll, and then you can watch it, like you can make the video live, but it won't be in HD, and then it'll process the HD version, and then it'll process the 4K version, and the editing software I use, which is called Shotcut, it took that 4K video that was about an hour long, it took it about three and a half hours to export just from the editing software before I could even start uploading it to YouTube. And then it took the video, let's see, I'm gonna try to put this into perspective. I started uploading it at about 11 a.m. yesterday and about two hours ago when I checked YouTube, the video is live in HD, but the 4K version is still processing, which means it has taken more than 24 hours for the 4K version of the video to upload to YouTube, which is patently absurd in my opinion. I mean, I know it's nobody's fault. I mean, it's my fault for filming in YouTube or in 4K, I mean and also the video file is like 34 gigs and a 1080p version probably would have been like three gigs. So long story short, I'm never filming anything in 4K again. It's way more trouble than it's worth. It takes way more time to do anything. It's just kind of a nightmare. Mm. Yeah, I'm really into this. I like the way these colors look. This purple is fantastic. Oh my God, yas. Okay, I think to stay in theme with the teal on the waterline, I'm gonna go in with this LA Girl Shockwave Neon Liner. This is in the color Fresh. This might be a mistake. I have a pink one I was thinking about using, and I was also thinking about using a purple one, but I think I'm just gonna try to ground it with a similar color to what's already on my lash line. I really like these LA Girl Shockwave liners. They go in pretty easily. They have pretty good opacity. They're like $3, like what more could you ask for? Although I think Urban Decay, I only have one Urban Decay, um, the 24-7 liner, pencil, whatever they're called. Um, I only have one of those, but I think that's still my favorite eyeliner that I own. Those things are incredible. And I would like to get more, but they're too expensive for me to get more. And also I have decision paralysis whenever I look at them. Like I just can never figure out, they have so many colors that if I'm gonna spend that amount, I know they're not that expensive, they're like $20 or something, but $20 for a single eye pencil is kind of like a lot to me. So the idea of spending $20 on an eye pencil, I just can never decide like which is the one that I want, you know, the one that I need to have. And so I end up just having decision paralysis and never buying them. Okay, what do I wanna do on this inner corner? God, I have no idea. Okay, what should I do on the inner corner? I'm really tempted to use that blue, but I just don't think it's right right now. I think I'm gonna go in with this highlighter shade, this like brilliant gold color. And I mean, we're talking Wonder Woman here with her gold armor. We've already got the 80s vibe down with this color. So why not just pull that brilliant gold into it? That seems like the right decision. So let's do that. Hopefully this won't be a disaster. I'm using this little uh, short shader Luxie 223 brush. I really like this for the inner corner. 
think this color is meant to be a highlighter, but like I said, I'm not playing with the rules here. Also, the inner my eyelids are generally pretty oily, and I find that my inner corners are always like oilery, oilery than the rest of my eyes. So I feel like I'm kind of tugging to get shadows in there. Okay, yeah, I'm into that. I think that was the right decision. Yeah, I don't know if this color is meant to be a highlighter or if it's meant to be an eyeshadow because it's a big pan. But it looks great as an eyeshadow. I mean, I guess they're all powders. Like, it matters, right? Yeah, that's a fun color in there. Wow, I really thought... Like, I had high hopes for this palette, but I also kind of thought it was going to be really shitty because I've never tried Revlon shadows before, and it seemed kind of like a cheap, you know, gimmick. But I'll be damned if I don't like the way this looks. This is pretty rad. Wow. I can't believe Revlon is out here doing these purple and pink eyeshadows that are actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I'm really into this. Sorry, I just keep dipping into that pink a little bit just so I can kind of blend the gold in with the rest of the look. Sometimes what I do, instead of doing an inner corner color just in the inner corner, I'll leave a little bit of space on my inner lid blank. And sometimes I forget to kind of like connect the dots right there. So I'm just trying to make sure that this is like blended in well. Yeah, what do we think about this, huh? Hmm. I'm not mad about this palette at all. I think it's pretty nice. All right, so something else I got in my Ulta order, I finally, finally, finally got the Essence Lash Princess Mascara. They actually have a two-pack. They had the non-waterproof and the waterproof one. I have never tried these mascaras before. They're only like $5 a piece, and everybody says this is like the best mascara they've ever used. So I'm gonna curl my lashes real quick, and then I'm gonna put this mascara on and see if it really is the best mascara on the planet. All right, let's see how this looks. Okay, my curl kind of dropped immediately, which is not great. But I feel like, I think I've said this in a video before, but I feel like you can use mascaras like 10 days in a row and it'll look different every single day. So I can't write it off yet, but let me curl the other side and do that one. Of course, there's a train outside. Okay, so that mascara, I'm not mad at it. I smudged it on both of my lash lines, which is probably just me being an idiot, but you know, it kind of is what it is. The one, my right eye, the curl dropped pretty much immediately. My left eye, the curl is sticking around a little bit better, but I also kind of like jabbed myself in the eye a little bit on my right side. So I think that kind of like jolted the curl down, if you will. Yeah, but it seems okay. I mean, I'll see how it wears, see if I like it later. I'll also try the non-waterproof version, see how that goes at a certain point. Um, but yeah, that's, I think the eye look complete. I'm pretty satisfied with this. I'm impressed with the color payoff. Um, they blended pretty well. Um, right now, I think it's on sale at Ulta if you're interested in this. Um, like I said, this is the Wonder Woman 1984 and Revlon palette. I feel like I'm just as surprised as you are that this looks pretty good. I'm dying to go in with that dark blue, but it's for another day. That'll give me some longevity with the palette. But I'm going to do my lips next. And what better combination to do with this purple and pink and turquoise eye than Lisa Eldridge Velvet Carnival and House Labs Rain? I'm going to line with House Labs, and I'm going to use Velvet Carnival, which is this which is this nice hot pink color. Oh, I got some on my hand. Something just happened with my camera. I think my battery might have died, but I was saying I'm just gonna go in with this lip liner. I'm probably gonna shut my mouth and speed this part up. So we're doing lip liner first and then Lisa Eldridge after. Here we go. All right, lip liner's on. Let's go in with Velvet Carnival. I haven't used this in a minute. I 
All right, so that's the lip done. Just a hot pink. I mean, as you can see, a hot ass pink with a little bit of a deeper fuchsia rim. I'm actually gonna cut the video off right now because I live next to R&B music producers and they're like right next to me. They're starting to record or play music or something. You might be able to hear their music if you turn up the volume. There's a little bit of bass rumbling. Makes it really fun when you're trying to film YouTube videos whenever you live next to someone who's an R&B music producer. Like, by all means, I wish them the best, but the music is loud and sometimes it makes it difficult to film. There's also a lot of dogs that live in this apartment um, and they bark all the time and it's really annoying. But anyway, this is the look. I use the Wonder Woman 1984 palette. I use Essence Lash Princess Mascara. And I use the House Labs Rain Lip Liner and Lisa Eldridge Velvet Carnival Lipstick. I'm pretty impressed with this. I'm about to go drink wine with one of my girlfriends and you can bet your ass I'm gonna show up in full 1980s glam and she's gonna love it and we're gonna drink wine and we're gonna have a good time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're thinking about this palette, so far I haven't used everything in it, but so far I'm pretty impressed with it. The purple is mm, chef's kiss. Um, yeah, I'm impressed. I think this is a good look and I'm happy. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I don't know what else to say when I sign off. Just thanks for spending time with me today. Um, I apologize that this isn't in 4K because I cannot be bothered to spend 30 hours trying to export and upload a 4K video. Thank you for listening to me talk about action movies with women, one of my favorite subjects. And I think that's it. Uh, have a good day, everybody. I'll see you next time. Hope you're having a good day, good evening, good morning, whatever you're doing. And I will see you in the future for a new look. Bye, guys.